Now, uh, as your counselor, I'm here to tell you about drugs and alcohol and why they're bad, okay? But not all drugs are equally bad. Some drugs are very addictive, and some a little less. I think that current legislation does a poor job at telling us which drugs are worse. And as with most major problems in the world, we can blame the United States of America for that. So in this video, I will talk about the problems with the current drug policies, provide you with a chart that's a better indication of the harmfulness of drugs, and I will talk about the future of drug regulation. To see where our current drug policies come from, we have to jump back in time to 50 years ago. In 1971, President Nixon officially declared the war on drugs. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Which led to an important piece of legislation, the Controlled Substance Act, or CSA. The CSA regulates the manufacturing, import, possession, use, and distribution of a bunch of substances. Illegal substances were categorized into five schedules, aka classifications, based on three factors. Their potential for abuse, their accepted medical use, and their safety and potential for addiction. This sounds really promising, but in reality many drugs were categorized incorrectly because decisions were not only based on research, but mainly on politics and stigmas. We can tell by taking a closer look at each schedule. Let's start off with Schedule 1. This indicates that the drug is not safe to use, not even under medical supervision. In this list we find drugs like heroin, MDMA, GHB, but also psychedelic drugs like DMT, LSD, psilocybin and psilocin, which are the compounds found in psychedelic drugs like mushrooms. And even marijuana is on this list. Now I'll remind you, this is the highest level. So these are the drugs that the American government thought to be of the most harm. So heroin and weed were considered to be more or less equally harmful. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to schedule number two. Abusing the drugs in schedule two can cause severe physical and mental addiction. Some examples of that would be amphetamine, or better known as Adderall, cocaine, methadone, morphine, oxycodone. And then in Schedule 3 we find drugs like anabolic steroids and ketamine. Xanax and Valium would be in Schedule 4. And lastly in Schedule 5 we find cough suppressants that contain codeine and CBD but then somehow only under the brand name of Epidiolex. So if you take a look at this classification, I think most people will find it weird that cannabis is considered to be worse than cocaine, ketamine or Valium. But also this list does not include all the types of drugs that are out there. For example, alcohol and tobacco were conveniently left out. <coughs> Tax money. <coughs> Tax money. <coughs> I have a really strong cough these days. I'm sorry for that. My biggest issue with the Controlled Substances Act and similar drug policies that many countries adopted ever since is that it's not based on science and that its enforcement led to severe consequences for many. Many people were locked up for the possession of weed and then fell into a downward spiral after their incarceration. Drug addicts were portrayed as criminals why all they needed was treatment. Also, the policies were introduced as a way to combat crime, but the numbers show that drug-related street crime has flourished ever since the 70s. Also, the war on drugs has led to military interventions and gave rise to people like Pablo Escobar in Colombia and all its consequences. So I think it's time for a better system to classify drugs. I think this classification should have its base in science better than politics. Luckily I'm not the only one who thinks so. In 2007, the researchers Nutt, King, Salisbury and Blakemore developed a racial scale to assess the harm of drugs and their potential misuse. I think that most of the results will surprise you. 
the researchers looked into three aspects of the harmfulness of drugs. They looked at the social harm, aka the damage it does to the environment. They looked at physical harm, the damage it does to the user. And they looked at dependence, aka how addictive is this drug really. As we can see in this chart, COD is considered to be the least harmful drug in this study. A scale that goes all the way up to heroin, which is considered the most harmful drug in this study. In total, they looked at 20 drugs, and also included two drugs that are often left out in research, tobacco and alcohol. And it turned out that these two drugs even fall into the upper half of the ranking, meaning that they are more harmful than for example LSD and GHB. But both alcohol and tobacco are readily available to almost every adult in the world. But if alcohol is really that harmful, why aren't we fighting a war against this drug? Not only are these drugs legal, these substances are taxed and also manufactured by big corporations with a strong lobby. I think it is very important that we do a reassessment of the harmfulness of drugs. A classification that is based on scientific evidence, building on knowledge from experts in the field, is so much better than what we have right now. The several aspects of harm become quantifiable and measurable, instead of being based on gut feeling and political views. It might be the start of a more rational discussion on drug use. It will also do a better job educating people on the real risks of socially accepted drugs like tobacco and alcohol. I will link to the full article in the description. As you may have been able to guess by my accent, I'm from the Netherlands. Once we were front runners when it came to liberal drug policies. Our distinction between soft drugs and hard drugs was once seen as revolutionary. But our list of hard drugs includes LSD, GHB and COD. And also the sale of mushrooms is prohibited since 2008. So I hate to admit it, but our drug policies are not founded in science either. But luckily, drug laws in the Netherlands are rarely enforced by the police. And because of this, even the courts have ruled against the government when individual cases were prosecuted. So you're pretty much safe walking around with a couple of LSD stamps in your pocket, even if you get stopped by the police. And this marks an important distinction between two forms of drug liberation. There's decriminalization and there's legalization. More and more countries are moving towards decriminalization of drug possession and or usage. For instance, in 2001, Portugal became the first European country to abolish all criminal penalties for personal drug possession. So substance abusers were no longer seen as criminals, but rather as patients. Prosecution was replaced by therapy. And with great effect, more people sought treatment, stigmas about drug usage were broken, and the country saw a drop of 90% in drug-related HIV infections. And in general, the number of drug-related deaths was six times lower in 2012 than the average in the European Union. So I think that's a lesson that we can learn from Portugal. But this does not mean that drugs are legal in Portugal, nor that you can buy them in a shop. For that to happen, we need legalization. And there's some hope in terms of legalization too. Countries like Canada, Uruguay and South Africa and more and more states in the US have legalized the recreational use of marijuana. But this is still only marijuana. And especially in the case of LSD and other psychedelic drugs, it is striking to see the inconsistent treatment of these relatively unharmful drugs in drug policies. When it comes to the legalization of psychedelic drugs, most countries are still very conservative. So until then, you will have to do your own research. I'm not saying that you should take drugs, but I think you should not look at the government to tell you what to do when it comes to taking drugs. Because according to most governments, we can still drink until our livers give up and smoke until our lungs are black. Yay! I'm curious to hear what you think. Which drugs should be forbidden? And which drugs should be legal? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.
I take a couple uppers, I down a couple downers, but nothing compares to these blue and yellow purple pills. I've been to Mushroom Mountain once or twice, but who's counting? But nothing compares to these blue and yellow purple pills. Yeah.